Hi everybody, welcome back to the Painting Channel. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a quick and easy bird. It's a wonderful little blue tip, one of our lovely garden birds. So let's roll that intro and let's see what happens. <laughs> Hi guys welcome back as I said at the start it is going to be a quick and easy bird I have chosen one of our iconic little garden birds the beautiful blue tit its beautiful colors really radiate in the garden during the breeding season and this young male is certainly showing off to the best of his ability now I hope that uh, you get a lot from this I'm sure you will and if by the end of it you've enjoyed the video then please give it the thumbs up and also, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you a thing to do that, but it really does help the channel grow. It helps me reach a lot more people and a lot more people can learn from my tutorials. So that would be wonderful. And when you're at it, you say, did I give it the thumbs up? Give it the thumbs up and also add your comments. And that's what it was. Press the bell icon that notifies you each and every time I upload new videos. So. That would be fantastic moving forward. In the meantime, I am going to get on with this bird. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll catch each and every one of you in the very next video. Take care, everyone. Happy painting. Bye-bye for now. Hi, guys. Welcome back. First and foremost, let's talk about the paper. It's Fabriano Artistico. Now, this is a 140-pound cotton rag, 100% cotton, and it's also a block. It's 9 inches by 12 inches, but the block is sealed on all sides by a little corner so you can get the next sheet off when it's all dry. Brushes, Rosemary & Co. synthetics, some small rounds, a lovely rigger, and that lovely sword, which I sometimes use but may not get to use it in this one. We shall see how we go. But the rest of the brushes are just uh, uh, several sizes of about a 10, a 6, and I think a 4 round brush and my lovely little rigger. So those are the brushes we're going to be using in this beautiful little picture of a garden blue, uh, blue tip. Now the blue tip, I've already transferred the image over and the reference for this will be on my Patreon. So please dive on over there and download it for free you're welcome to do that to learn from it's not going to cost you anything and you don't even have to be a patreon to do that but while you're there hey why not take a look at it and see if you like some of the tiers it's only going to cost you five or ten dollars a month anyway to see this full video and many many more the colors that i started with is oriolin a lovely translucent or transparent yellow lemon color very cool, but really works. I'm also using cobalt blue in the head colors. Now the head color here, I started off with a blue, then I dampened off the brush, took the excess water out and lightened. By doing that using a chisel edge and a push motion, and on the back end, a pulling motion, I was able to make the paint sort of go out from the blue almost to the white paper. I'm using the same colors, but a little bit more of uh, ultramarine blue into this mix. And I brought that first color around the back end of the head. It's so iconic, this bird. I'm taking a damp brush once again, just to lift off a little section. I've also added a bit of um, indigo into the mix, just to darken that blue right the way down near where, just under the eye where I'm at now. And all these colors are fairly just basic colors, very little extra added. So you know, the cobalt is cobalt, the aureolin was aureolin. It's only at this stage that I start using some of the other colors, such as indigo, to really make that quite dark. I also used a lot less water in the mixes. More pigment, less water gave me a much stronger value, color value. Don't forget, all these colors will lighten as you go through the process. As they dry, they will lighten. So really, you do need to consider how dark you want that plumage to be and try and work that. I used a little bit of cadmium yellow here, a little bit of, just to uh, put a little feather marks into the chest before coming back to some cobalt blue into the wing. And there's lots of little colors I'm thinking of. I'm starting to think about mixing 
the flight feathers and a very soft wash a little bit of green going into that just a bit of yellow a bit of the blue working together give me a slightly greenish tinge now i'm working towards the olive color and I'm adding some indigo some greens some yellows mixing it around and testing it on other papers just to see how well that green looks and they have that beautiful little olive green color on the back of the shoulders and going down the back between the two feathers now mine's a little bit lighter that's great because i can come back in later and put a little bit of darker i've left a little bit of white paper on that little white wing bar and i've added some darker blues now into the flight feathers now i'm not feather counting i'm not trying to make this exactly as a blue tit is if i wanted to do that i could i would just have to be a lot more serious about the drawing and a lot more serious about sort of counting the edges and the numbers of feathers and some people will count them and they will let you know if it's wrong but this is just a bit of fun this is just having a lovely shot at a quick and easy garden bird without making too much of it i've put a bit of the same green in the underside of the tail because it's in shade it's somewhat darker and there's that little bit of really dark in the wing there that separates them two and it adds a great deal of contrast as does the chin strap around the top uh, sort of where the yellow meets the white of the head there's that lovely chin strap very very dark what i'm doing here is i'm painting negative spaces i'm looking at the greens and the blues and coming over the yellows to create the negative space trying to show you or trying to create the effect that those lovely wispy yellow feathers are just sort of going over parts of the body so they're going over the wings over the rest of the body and it's using that negative space to do that now i'm using a little bit of gray because if you have those feathers parted they're only pretty much yellow on the very top parts of the feathers they're very very fine very very soft but I wanted to create some of the greys where some of them are parted, you see between them, especially as you come down the top, you know, the belly and around the vent area, they get very cool, very dark, and I'm adding that in. I want to put a bit of warmth in there too. I use a little bit of translucent orange in that part, but essentially I'm putting some uh, relief. I'm trying to create the roundness of the bird. Think of painting an apple where you've got the light at the top and the shadows at the bottom. It's very much the same thing. And then you've got that little dividing chest mark or that breast mark coming down where there's a division and a little dark mark uh, in the center of the tummy. I'm reinforcing the tail now with some more darks just to give a bit more definition, some of the feather structure. And I'm also going in with a very, very faint uh, color around the cheeks but now I'm putting in that darker mark that lovely eye stripe right up to the eyes now the colors that I used for that was pretty much indigo but around the eye I actually chose to use a little bit of indigo with a touch of uh, I think it was sepia that I put in just to take it off the pure blue but I needed that darkness around that eye the eye is quite large it really is a pretty eye and I just enjoy it sort of, I mean, that's what, what makes these birds such a beautiful uh, bird to see. They've got big eyes, they've got these striking little features, diddly little beak, and that's what I put in there, that tiny little beak, pretty much the same sort of colors. Now I'm looking at the feet, and the feet are quite pale to start with. I didn't want to go in too heavy to start with those. I can always wait for that to dry and just pop back in with some definite lights and darks further on into this. But essentially, I just wanted to put them in. Now, the beautiful gait on this is the fact that these birds often sit with their legs uh, sort of spread like this. They, it's lovely to see them, but they're so characterful. They're you can almost see them twisting left and right, looking at what they're looking at, insects or a mate or wherever, and you can see them sort of twitching from and putting their weight on one leg and then the other. I'm looking at the simple branch effect now, just a very simple earth colors, uh, medium, nothing heavy, nothing too uh, dark or too drastic, quite reddish, a lot of sienna going into that, and a little bit of um, darker, burnt umber and some sepia coming in and just darkening some of these but the branch is not too difficult to think about and you don't have to go exactly as the reference displays it you can make your own up I didn't want to go too mad 
Now I'm looking at some of the colors that I want to put in around the bird in the background. I don't want to put in a background that is the same as the reference. I wanted to leave it somewhat uh, limited, uh, leaving a lot of white paper and just become very, very suggestive. But I'm using something that a lot of artists use, and that is called counter change. That is using dark against light. Where you see the light parts of the bird, I'm trying to put in a quite a dark background. A very subtle greens, a lot of um, so ultramarine blue, a little bit of phthalo green, and quite a bit of oranges, and also some uh, ultramarine violets going into that as well. And I come in and put a bit of blue up in here now which is suggesting possibly sky, possibly something else. It doesn't really matter. They are all colors that will sort of stimulate the mind to think of a background. Paying a lot of attention as I come round the head now, I do not want to lose any of the shape or the form, but I'm using negative space. I'm painting the background, leaving the positive shapes of the bird's head, tapping little bits in to suggest those feathers on the back of the head especially, but I'm being very, very careful. I'm also trying to make sure that I don't leave any runs. I've got to say, and I'll throw my hands up, I almost lost it at one point on this because I was working over the whole area. I should have had a bigger brush. I didn't. And areas in my warm studio were drying up on me too fast, and I almost lost the whole thing. But you can see that all I wanted to do was suggest the backgrounds just suggest the colors coming down below underneath this was quite a nice green that i put in here but i had to lift some out above the branch so that it looked that it continued on so i dabbed some of the other paint away added just a little touch of oreolin into that little mix there so that it would at least suggest the continuation of that color i just tried to keep it nice and free and nice and loose and very very suggestive to you the viewer that's all we're coming to the end now the bird is done i'm just putting some final touches into the branches and uh, into the sort of the thing that it's sticking uh, sitting on a little bit more information and shadowy areas looking to where the light is there's a lot of shade between the legs so we are making that quite heavy i'm not trying to paint too much into the feet and the legs at the moment although i will have to go and do that what you've also see i've done is i've left little bits of light paper little bits of edges around the bottom around the vent and down the back of the bird that suggest a pure highlight but there's no paint there it's just white paper and you can use white paper very very effectively like this so think about that when you're planning your painting that you can leave these little edges that are significant and they do throw the bird out now i'm just finishing the feet off with a little bit of dark we are at the end of the painting it just remains for me to sign this one and i have had a lot of fun with it i do hope you have too and i hope you get something to take away in your own paintings now don't forget there is a new video every fortnight on this channel in watercolor there is interspersed with one every fortnight on my old channel so be sure to tune in to both subscribe to both catch you all soon bye bye Okay, so we're, it's all finished. I do hope that you have a go at this one, as I say, and uh, don't get yourself into a bind. It's a small enough painting. It's a small enough image to have a go at several times. So feel free to do that. With that all said and done, take care. Have fun. I'll catch you, each and every one of you, in the next video. All the best for now. Bye-bye. Okay. Hi everybody and uh, no <laughs> have to do two in person. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. This is going to be, I hope, a quick and easy bird, so Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing a quick and easy bird for you. It's a little blue tech, a little garden bird, so let's roll that intro and let's see what happens. Okay. And uh, he's just looking full on. No, no, no. 
no, no, no. No. Start again. 